How is it going, folks? Welcome back to Park to Prem. Today, the end of season number eight. After seven successive promotions, it's all going to come to a halt today. Or is it? I mean, yeah, it, it probably is. Look, we start today in eighth place. We take on Derby County in 18th. Elsewhere, Brentford, QPR, Wrexham. They all sit above us. We need three teams who have relatively easy games to slip up. QPR are taking on Middlesbrough, who are down in 12th. Brentford, maybe a slightly trickier game for them, away from home against Sunderland, who are in 10th. And as for Wrexham, well, they're at home against Plymouth Argyle, who themselves are trying to save themselves from the drop on the final day of the season. The reality is that I'm coming back for this final game expecting absolutely nothing. If we do somehow make the playoffs, biblical scenes, but let's be realistic. It's not going to happen. Four matches played since last episode. One game to end the season. After that, the end of season wrap up, a squad review. Let's get right into things. Now, since last episode, we have played four matches, three wins, one defeat. The defeat really did sting, though. And that defeat was this one here to Brentford. It was 3-2 to them at halftime. We rolled the dice, tried to get stuff going in the second half, and it didn't happen. Had we won this game we'd be in the playoffs right now, which, uh, I mean, when you phrase it like that, it sucks. The reality was, though, Brentford were just too good. I know I love to do this a lot, but Dembele plays for Brentford. He is on £110,000 a week. For context, our entire club's salary is £115,000 a week. I maintain the championship is not fair. In terms of the other games that we've had since we last hit, they've actually been quite good. 2-0 against Oxford, 3-0 against Cardiff, perhaps the highlight, our most recent game against Ipswich Town. A really confident result against a team who are almost nailed on for the playoffs. And Ipswich Town themselves, actually, I think could still end up getting second in the league on the final day of the season. It's actually mad. This championship table, there is a battle for the playoffs, a battle for second place, there is a relegation scrap, and then there's just Nottingham Forest chilling as champions. I'm sure they're loving this. Do people know the meme where it's like the guy with like a pipe smoking something and then there's like a fight going on in the middle and he's watching it really excitedly? That is Nottingham Forest today. Now, of course, originally I did label this game as potentially a bit of a nothing burger, but given how the results have come out, we do have the slimmest of chances. As a result, I'm afraid Jude, who I think may be leaving in the summer, he won't get his fond farewell. I can't even justify putting him on the bench today. When it comes to the team, though, we have a few injuries to the likes of Aaron King and Ferreira, two players who really be brought in this year as depth, and they've been a little bit redundant. We didn't need as much depth as I thought we might this year, um, so they don't impact the team too much. But when it comes to the actual squad, you'll notice that I am picking the team today largely based on form in the last five games. It's safe to say when you look at our form to end the year, it's been very hit and miss. So as a result, I'm bringing in all the players who have been hit and hoping that maybe we can get a home run against Derby. In terms of what that does mean, the goalkeeper position is Kinski in goal. That has been a foregone conclusion for a while. I have actually just offered out Josh Keeley via his agent. Apparently, we might be able to get £3 million for him, according to the agent who says that Brentford are interested. So Brentford, if you want to make a bid today, that would be nice. The back four is the back four that we've really settled in for this tail end of the season. NDIA at left back just as a little reminder his contract is up at the end of next year the 18 year old recently broke into the Senegalese national team he doesn't want to sign a contract apparently the club's not big enough for his ambitions that terrifies me because unlike well for Aronson where I was happy to lose him on a free potentially if NDIA isn't going to sign a new deal I have to sell him this summer and when you look at how good he is I mean, that's going to bloody hurt. Ricky D, of course, has re-emerged into the first team. He sits at right back alongside Gasperi and Mkise, of course, three players who were with us in League One last year and part of our defence. In the defensive mid department, we are going with Masters alongside João Victor. Yeah, I am making a big call today. I am dropping Ricardo Sanchez. Is that too big or a call? I feel like when you look at his form to end the year, he has been really, really disappointing, the 22-year-old. So yeah, I'm dropping him today. Masters is going to play as the deep line playmaker with Jao Victor at right centre defence in mid, a player who actually popped up with a really clutch goal earlier on in this run-in at the end of the year against Charlton. If he could come clutch today, that would be massive. In the midfield, we are going with Ngoma and Kolke, two players who have been, well, really good at points 
and really, really bad at points. And Goma is just a weird player, but actually in the last four games, he has stepped up his performances after a really disappointing run of games. He is going to play alongside Kolke, who, well, when we've played him, he's played bloody brilliantly. So the Bolivians back in the team today and up top, like I said, picking a team based on form, it means that Toby Hines is going to come in and play as the pressing forward at the left striker position. At right striker, we are going with Madder. Madder has been very, very good lately, as is indicated by his recent performances. The 25-year-old starts up top. That does mean, controversially perhaps, the likes of Oscar, who is our top goal scorer of 18 goals this year, and also Sam Fahe, uh, who has a really good tally for the season, but this year his form has been a bit hit and miss. They're both on the bench. I don't know if it's necessarily suggested to have your two top goal scorers on the bench for the final game of the year that you absolutely have to win, but... Yeah, it's the, it's the situation we find ourselves in. Ultimately, however, for us to get anywhere near the playoffs today, we have to win and we need QPR, Brentford or Wrexham, two of the three teams, to lose. If any of them draw, the odds on us going up into the playoffs become very, very slim. I'm quite resigned to the fact that even if we get a win today, it's probably not going to be enough. But you know what? Sometimes you have to hit start recording an episode of Football Manager and just hope. And hoping is very much what we're going to do. We have to do, at the very least, a win here. We have to win our home against Derby. Given the form this year, we should win against Derby. Worth noting, we could still drop down to 10th place, which would be such a harsh position to end the season in. So... Yeah, I want to finish as high as possible. Derby County are playing a 4-3-3. We are, of course, playing our usual system. Early on here, it's been one-way traffic. We now have an early chance as well. Gasperi headers it against the post, and Derby County get it away from danger. That was a really good opportunity. Early stages in this game, still nil-nil. You can see Derby was 67% of the ball, but creating nothing with it. They're really just passing the ball around at the back, which... I mean, I don't really mind as long as they're not coming near our goal. Gasperi now with a chance to maybe make something happen from this free kick. Xiao Victor, Niele, and Goma! Oh, I thought the captain was about to bang it in the top corner when we really needed a goal. It goes just wide. We are knocking on the door early on here. But the longer we go without scoring, the more nervous I'm going to get. Ricky D on the far side. My right back. He throws it to Jao Victor. Back to Jao Victor. Can we get the ball into the middle, perhaps? Masters. He's got great passing range. We're going all the way back to Mkise. Ricky D, though, being afforded some space in the wide area. Masters. Ricky D. The build-up play sensational. And N'Goma shoots wide again. I don't even really want to look at the other results going on elsewhere until we're at least winning in this game because the worst thing in the world would be if the likes of QPR, Brentford, Wrexham all slip up and then we don't win. I mean, that would just be sad. It's half... Uh, I was about to say it's half time at 0-0. It might not be over yet. Gasperi, he scored another. He's popped up in so many live commentaries. It's his 10th goal of the season. Gasperi is a player who joined us having been released from Roma in League One. He has grown with the club. He is one of our best players. And right there, he pops up with a massive header just as I was resigning myself to the fact that actually at half time, it was going to be 0-0. We deserve to be ahead in this game. Here's the critical thing. Latest scores and table. Is a win even enough at the moment? No. It knows the answer. Uh, QPR are winning 1-0 against Middlesbrough. They have to lose for us to go above them. Uh, Brentford are winning 2-1. They also have to lose for us to go above them. I mean, bizarrely, you can see here, QPR and Brentford are actually going ahead of Norwich and Ipswich. But for both those teams, I, I don't think they can even fall outside the playoffs today. Also, where are Wrexham? Wrexham, 0-0. I mean, none of those games seem definitive, but we've still got a lot to play for here. I am looking at N'Goma on a book and thinking, how long do I want to risk him for? We might take him off, although he's about to take a corner. Maybe I need to keep him on. He's whipping it in. It's headed away to Hines. He's going to keep it alive. N'Goma, Colke, edge the box. My Bolivian shoots and it's blocked. I wanted him to score a blockbuster goal there. Sadly, it's blocked away. But well, we do still have possession. Zhao Victor, go to Ricky D on the right. He finds his man. Ricky, what can you do? You're so fine. You get assists all the time. Hey, Ricky, it's 2 0 here. Yeah. It's offside. That was such good commentary and the linesman's ruined it. I can't believe how good that off-the-cuff commentary was. Sometimes I surprise myself. I don't consider myself a wordsmith, but maybe I should. Uh, bueno, bueno, bueno. <laughs> Just completely ruined the moment there. He's bringing it forward. NDIA, lovely crunching tackle. 
Obviously, 1-0 here is fine. Goal difference isn't really going to be a factor on this final day because our goal difference is so good. It's the second best in the league. We just need three points. Of course, the more convincingly we can do that, the less strain on my heart, which would be nice. NDIA. This might be his last ever game for us. He puts it in. Hines' efforts blocked. It was a great opportunity. Masters back into the box and... Derby get it away again. Okay, I'm going to make some changes here. Ngoma, off you come. Sam Fahey, on you come. I'm also going to bring in Suleimane Kamara. This guy recently signed a new deal, unlike NDIA, who didn't want to sign one. He signed on for three years and an optional three-year extension. We love Kamara. He's committed to the cause. He's going to come on alongside Fahey. Uh, Jao Victor, not having the best of games either. I'm going to bring in Sanchez for some fresh legs in the midfield. Striker-wise... We've not looked amazing here. Do I want to make another sub? I don't think I do. I'm sure Oscar is sat on the bench thinking, Gaffer, why are you not bringing me on? Oscar, your time will come. We're wearing the down their defence to bring you on against a tiring set of sheep. Or is it rams? It, it's, it's, the, it's the rams, isn't it? I shouldn't call Derby the sheep. Uh, that's... that's <laughs> I was going to make a Welsh joke. Let's not do that. NDIA, bail me out of this situation. He's going to play it forward to Masters, who is going to forget the football, exists at his feet, and that's just how... Oh. What's that? Okay, um, yeah, goal, derby. I want to be annoyed about the fact Masters has given away the ball here, but should we just talk about the finish? McCarthy lays it to Morris, who takes one touch and then just bangs it into the top corner. Right, um, Oscar on your come. I just feel like we need to click on his profile and give him a little pep talk. Oscar. I love you, mate. You've been amazing for us this year. 18 goals, criminally undervalued. Look, you're wanted by some big teams like... Leeds United and Twat. Um, look, I need you to show up now. I'm going to make a bit of a different change here. I'm going to go to two advanced forwards. I'm going to take off Toby Hines. He's not at the best of games today. But with both Oscar and Niele, neither of them are really pressing forwards. They're both quite good advanced forwards, though. So we'll play them in their best roles. They're both going to sit on the back line. We need something here. There's 33 minutes left. Ricky D's got injured. Ricky D's got injured. I mean, I'm glad we've got a sub. Martinez, you've been... Not good this year, if we're being honest, mate. Really had high hopes for you because I love the country of Chile. You've let me down. Step up today. I know you can give team talks to players when you bring them on in-game. Does anyone else feel like football managers should have a thing where you can talk into the microphone? You know, Nintendogs used to have that where you could talk to the dogs on your DS. I should be able to talk to my players in football manager before they get subbed on and the tone of my voice influences their performance. That should be a thing. Why are Derby on the attack again? Derby County have scored. I'm sat here talking about Nintendogs whilst we're throwing away a chance to get in the playoffs. Brilliant. Derby County playing the wall through the middle. Is that Job Bellingham? Just a bloke called Job. It's probably Bellingham's brother, isn't it? McCarthy plays it inside. Morris scores. Um, yeah, the subs haven't worked out here, have they? Just to confirm, by the way, it is Bellingham's brother. Uh, he's quite good. I mean, he's kind of the jack of all trades, master of none, but... He'd probably walk into our team. Okay, we find ourselves down in this game. I want to say somehow down in this game. Derby County have had three shots on target. Two of them have gone in. It has been one of those days so far, but there is time to turn this ship around. 23 minutes and counting. We've got our best attackers, in my opinion, on the pitch right now. Kamara, Niele, tries to skip past his man. Tackle flies in, but I'll tell you what, the Swede has kept hold of the ball. He floats in. Oscar battling away. Doesn't get the first ball, gets the second. Sanchez, NDIA, to back to Sanchez. Little bit of build-up play here around the back. Don't mind this. The pressure is on. We are penning them back. Can the Senegalese wing back find a ball into the middle? He gets to the byline. He pulls it in, and somehow it deflects across to Martinez, who might still be able to get the ball into a dangerous area. Derby with everyone camped back inside their own box. We've got a corner now. Oscar, back post, falls to uh, uh, Niele, who shoots. It hits the post. It hits the keeper on the back, and it's cleared away for another corner. I'll tell you what, Derby County are under pressure here. At some point, I've got to go more attacking. I will wait and see what happens from this corner first. Oscar... Masters just forgets he has... The, he's not had a good day, game today. Although, I'll tell you, what a tackle that is while he's on a bucking. If that had gone wrong, that could have been disastrous. But Stewart puts in a cruncher. Can, can we make something happen here? My hopes are getting elevated. The ball's played towards Sam Fahey. Unfortunately, it's cleared away. 
And I feel like this is just the point that's sent to our highlight. But the longer it goes on, the more my hope increases. Sanfa, he shoots! Oh my word, I take it all back. It's his 15th goal of the year. The bloke's like 17 or 18 and he's doing that. Gasperi wins a crunching tackle. Sam picks up the ball and just says, you know what? I'm taking this game by the scruff of my neck. He shoots. Keeper can only get a hand to it. A venomous effort ripples in the back of the net. Of course, now Derby immediately have a corner. Uh, yeah, it's Bellingham over it. Can we make something happen defensively here? The ball is floated in towards the back post. They've scored immediately. I hate football manager. A critical issue this year has been the fact that we like to concede three goals a game. Uh, if, yeah, if you concede three goals a game, very difficult to win consistently. Ugh. What a short-lived comeback. It lasted two minutes. I mean, at this point, we've made all our subs. We've made as many changes as we possibly can. It's just a case of, can we get the ball forward quicker now? Can we try and make something happen late on in this game? Uh, I mean, what, what do you even do at this point? Play through the middle, maybe? Play, I, I kind of like the idea of playing through the middle. I can't believe I'm doing this. I think I'm going to go to the free striker system. You know, we're going to dust off the old faithful. I feel like this is the play. We used this back in the non-league days when we desperately needed goals. Safe to say today is one such day. Uh, NDIA, wing back on attack. Martinez, wing back on attack. I don't remember the last time I played with this many strikers, but today feels like a bloody good day to do it. 10 minutes, we need two goals. I mean, I should probably just check elsewhere. How are results going? Okay, even if we won today, it wouldn't be enough. But we are down in ninth, and I don't want to be in ninth. Can we rescue something here? Oscar, with a chance. Wrexham have just made it 3-1. They're in the playoffs at, if results go their way. Balls whipped in. Gasperi can't get there. Walton palms it away, but we still have it. Neale shoots just wide. Eight minutes of added time. Is there to be the latest of late drama? No. No, there's not. The season ends. With a, a crushing defeat, but the only silver lining, if there is to be one, is QPR won, Brentford won, Wrexham won. So we weren't actually going to finish high, higher than eighth, even if we'd won. So it doesn't, it doesn't really matter, does it? We've dropped one place there. Yes, it sucks to miss out on the playoffs narrowly, but ultimately, what an immense first season in the championship. Expectations were low today. Yes, disappointing not to get the result. We had the second best goal difference in the league. If we can just strike a slightly better balance of attacking and defending, adding that little bit more strength, genuinely, I think we will be in the playoffs next year. Um, of course, the big caveat to all of that is, as Ricky D's out for two months, um, is, I don't know who's coming down from the Premier League yet. Who is coming down from the Premier League? Is it, is it any of the big teams... Burnley, Leeds United, and potentially Bristol City, although these teams are all still scrapping it out at the bottom. Also, Crystal Palace are in the Conference League. Guerrero gets to play European football next year. I feel sad. Brentford have made a £3 million bid for Keeley. Yeah, you can, you can absolutely have Josh Keeley for £3 million. Our backup goalkeeper for a very, well, I was going to say a long time. No, he was a starting goalkeeper for a long time. He's not good enough anymore. His contract's up at the end of the year and he wants like £15,000. Let's just get some money for him. The board have set the budget for the coming year. Wage budget of £125,000. Transfer budget, apparently £38 million. Um, Yeah, no idea where they're getting the £38 million from. I feel like they don't really acknowledge the fact that we're losing almost a million pounds a month. But maybe one day the board will realise. I mean, to be fair, we're currently spending £115,000. I feel like we could probably scale this up to £200,000 for the coming year. Um, we naturally already have some really exciting talent joining us. Um... As I discussed last episode, we have added one more player to that list of players joining us. Darren Roberts, marked for release by Man City. I've decided to sign him on a free, mostly just because he's Australian and we don't have one of those yet. Anyway, I'm going to hop forward towards the end of the season. We'll get the end of season wrap up stuff out of the way today. I also want to do a little bit of a squad review ahead of the transfer special. Right now, our first team, I believe, sits at 30 players. That is a little too large, especially when you look at the number of appearances. Simply put, there were players I just couldn't give game time to. And uh, whilst there are some players like Gillian, who of course was in last year's intake that we covered last episode, who trained with the first team but aren't really part of it. Similar story, I suppose, with Espinosa. Um, there are players who maybe I need to try and find a way into the first team at the very least. I just want to tidy this up. I get anxious whenever you can scroll on the squad screen, so I'd quite like to sort it out.
Here we do have the board objectives for the current year. Apparently, expand the stadium is currently in process. That is news to me right now. Aim for end of next year, mid-table championship finish, and they just want top half finishes beyond that. I've already said it, my aim for the coming year, playoffs. Of course, I could tell the players I want to reach the playoffs, then they'd probably all cry. So I'm just going to tell them top half, and they all stand up and clap. Brilliant. E even in Gomo, who's been a pain in the butt this year, even he's loving it. Ah, okay, here's the stadium expansion plans. We're adding 500 seats. <laughs> 500 seats! It's not quite as many as I was hoping for. First bit of transfer business of the summer done. Keeley joining Brentford. Three million pounds for him. Obviously our second choice goalkeeper behind Kinski for the second half this year. Another bit of transfer business I think we're going to get done nice and early here. I decided to ask Ferreira's agent if there was any interest in him. He's been using an ESC slot this year. Very much a squad player for us. I mean, he's only started seven games. Was good as a little stopgap option, but I'd like to think we can do better than him. And his performances really just haven't been up to snuff to the point where I was wasn't even really considering him for the match squad. So £4.1 million for him, freeing up an ESC slot just feels like a little bit of a no-brainer. Um, there are a couple of other players whose agents have been asking about possible moves. One such player, Jude Soonsup Bell. I've been told Oxford might also be interested in him for £3.4 million. Given the season he's just had and the fact that I think it's safe to say he's not of championship quality, Hoping they might come in in, well, the near future. Not looking to sign any players just yet. I'd like to get to the June period when the playoffs are done, where we can really review the squad in depth. But players like Ferreira, who looks like could be leaving the building, um, I do not mind selling now. I'd rather get some of this business done early, get as much money made as possible, and then we can go full on ham reinvesting it next episode. Also, of course, knowing all the young players that are joining us, kind of need to free up spots for some of them. One such player, Rod Drospina, he's probably going to walk into our starting eleven. the Colombian. You compare him to Jude, you start to begin to understand why it might be in our interest to sell Jude now. Some good off-season news, by the way. Our under-21s have just retained the under-21 Division 3 title. Our youth level, I believe, has been upgraded in the last year, so there's a chance we might get to play at a slightly higher level in kind of the Premier League second tier of B teams. Right now we're playing in a division where we've won it the last two years, I'd like a little bit more of a challenge for our young players. You can see Espinosa, 13 goals to his name at this level. Koke, uh, yeah, maybe a bit unfair that I've been letting him play in the under-21s league. He's been playing very well in it. Oxford have made a bid for Jude, £4 million. Uh, yeah, I am, <laughs> I'm just going to accept that. I was thinking about negotiating some kind of sell-on, but to be honest, £4 million is kind of beyond what I was anticipating getting for him. You know, he's been a great servant for us the last few years, but... Times are changing. I feel like we've got to close the book on a previous chapter. If we want to make it to the Premier League, we need new heroes. And I'm not going to lie, I do look at Ricky D and think, oh, do I need to replace you? I mean, we tried to replace him with Martinez. It's safe to say didn't really work out that way. This guy did not perform well. There was part of me looking at his £6 million valuation thinking, could I, ca could I cash in on him? Could I sell him and Ricky D and then buy someone else? Maybe that would be reckless. Certainly not a move I feel like we need to be doing now in May. I am just wondering though, Oxford set to spend £8 million on our players. Have they had, like had a tycoon takeover? Oh, okay, they've had a tycoon takeover last June. It's all starting to make a bit more sense now. I'm just sat thinking, are there any other players that I'd like Oxford to go for? I mean, Christian Martinez, it, it, with his agent, is there any interest? No. Mamadou Dia has been an okay centre-back option this year, but I do look at him thinking 6.6 .6 to 7.4 million. I signed him for 180k. Uh, should we just ask his agent? Is there any interest? No. Okay. Well, there's some players I wouldn't mind getting rid of, but I suppose it is very early on in pre-season. I'm kind of surprised Oxford are doing as much as they are. It's not even a transfer special, and we're set to make £11 million just in sales randomly at the end of the year. That's That feels good to me. Sorry to QPR fans, by the way. You just lost in the playoff semi-final. Brentford win the other semi-final, so it's going to be Brentford v Ipswich. Winner gets promoted to the big time. I mean, look, look, look at this now. It's kind of mad. You have from third place to seventh, separated by one point. I feel hard done by down in ninth, but actually, imagine being Wrexham in all of this. They must be heartbroken. I would also like to point out that this year we got 73 points. Last year, that would have been enough to get you in the playoffs. The year before that, it would have been enough to get you in the playoffs. The year before that, would have got you in the playoffs. We've actually had a really good year this year. It's just a case of the gap between the top championship teams and the lower ones 
was the biggest it's been in a long, long time. I need to get past the playoff final so we get the end of season wrap up bit, but maybe you're enjoying this kind of half transfer special. It's not a transfer special. It's kind of a mash continue and try and get rid of the Deadwood special. It's a sad day, but Jude is leaving the building. Signed as a free transfer, imperative to our success in previous years, but this season in 14 starts, nine sub appearances, five goals. Times are changing. Thank you for your service. I'll salute him as he goes. You will be missed, my friend. Apparently, Gasperi's been linked with Premier League Bristol City. Let me tell you now, Gasperi not going anywhere. He's got 10 goals for us this year. And I mean, when you look at him, what a player he has ended up being, the 21-year-old. He's recently signed a new deal. It's a four-year extension. You can see the improvement he's made during his time at the club as well. I love this bloke. And in fact, I mentioned Gasperi signing a new contract. One thing I've not mentioned much through this year is the fact that I have been kind of renewing a lot of player contracts behind the scenes. You can see here, certainly the average wage of the squad has kind of crept up as the season's gone on. But actually, when you look at contracts expiring, Sam Fahey has already agreed a contract extension that kicks in officially at the end of the year. Ricky D's contract's up at the end of next year, one of the reasons why we might want to move him on as he wasn't previously wanting to sign a new contract due to a promise. It's the same thing as Jude and Ngoma where there's a promise, but there isn't a promise and he's waiting for the promise. So I don't know what's happening here. We might have to sell him in the summer because of that. The other players with contracts expiring next year, Keeley, who's leaving to go to Brentford and NDIA who, yeah, we are probably going to have to sell if... He doesn't want to sign a new contract. Does he want to sign a new contract? He wants the squad to be improved. I feel like I've got the summer transfer window to try and improve things and convince him to stay. And then if we can't do that, probably got to sell him by deadline day. He's so good, but I just can't afford another Ferrari in some situation where I lose a key player for nothing, especially because he's definitely worth something. Okay, Ferreira didn't get a work permit, but Oxford have deemed him worthy of an ESC slot. I'm not going to let them know. They're probably making a critical mistake there. Ultimately, we've just got £4 million pounds for a player who's not bad by any means, but hasn't shone for us. We don't really have any attachment to him. Some great money, good profit, and we free up an ESC slot. And if you were wondering how the Premier League table finished, we've not yet had the playoff final, but here you can see Burnley, Bristol City, Bournemouth. The team's going down. Bournemouth, 39 points and relegated. That is a very, very harsh points total to not be safe with. Ordinarily, that would be enough. The bargain hunter in me wants to look at Bournemouth's team and be like, oh, who's got release clauses? Who could we steal? Then I realise... I can't afford any of their good players' wages, can I? Even if their release clauses for players like Simeone are really good, he's not that good, to be fair. But even if he's really cheaply valued, I can't afford the actual prices. I've noticed here that Xenia is valued at 9.4 to 12 million pounds. I'm going to ask his agent about market interest. Is there any interest? He can bring in tables worth between 2.3 and 9.4 million. Uh, I mean, if someone bids 9.4 million, I'll sell him. It's going to be annoying now if someone makes a bid of less than that. And then he gets annoyed about it. There's a big difference, isn't there, between two million and nine million pounds for him. I I'm not being mad, am I, to think that I should be selling him for that price. Like, I like Xenia. He's not nine million pounds good, though. Championship player final time. Brentford v Ipswich. My fingers on the button. My fingers hit the button. Brentford are back in the Premier League. And with that, we instantly jump into our end of season review for the 2030-31 year. Feels weird not having any trophies below this bit. I've got so accustomed to that. Signing of the year, unsurprisingly, has gone to NDIA, but you have to look at the likes of Oscar, who chipped him with 18 goals. Madder, who of course came in for Ferrarinson. Bit of pressure on him to hit the ground running. Nine goals to his name is a really respectable total. And then you look at the likes of Colke, who was a real surprise package, I feel like. We kind of signed him falsely promising him a star player role, he might have earned an opportunity to be a star player just based on his form at the tail end of the year. Obviously, when it comes to transfers out, there were some big ones here. Tim left for 6.75 million. Still a mental sum of money. Sergio, of course, left to Tenerife for 5 million pounds. To be honest, he has not improved a great deal this year. Um, Yeah, he... Really doesn't look that special to me. I feel pretty good to get 5.25 million for him. I know he's a player who some people thought was particularly good, but I don't know. He's not quick enough to be a centre-back and he's not got the ability going forward to be a wing back. He's just a bit weird. Other sales this year, of course, included players like Callum Goldsmith. He went to play for Borussia Mönchengladbach, played one game, scored one goal, did not elaborate. Wouldn't be surprised if they try and sell him this year, to be honest. 
And of course, I suppose we do have to talk about the big headline sale. Guerrero actually ended up making a couple of starts at the end of the season for Crystal Palace. Due to the appearances he made this year, they've recently paid us a bonus of, uh, I think it was £3.5 million. Just as a little reminder, £7.5 million will be received for him this summer. We also have a percentage profit of Nexelon. If he scores a few more goals for them, that'll be £3.5 million. If he makes any caps to the Spanish national team, which when you look at him, kind of expect he will at some point, that would be more money as well. Right now, apparently his valuation is 67 to 80 million pounds. If anyone bids that, we'd make mad money off the profit sell-on clause. Just to be clear, I hope that no one does buy him. In an ideal world, we sign him back and because of the percentage profit, we get him for a discounted price because... I don't think we're getting in for less than 35 million. In terms of league performance, board is delighted, A plus, top half finish. We were expected to battle against relegation. Ultimately, we finished way clear of it. 32 points away from the drop is massive. Moment to remember, apparently the free free draw against Sunderland. I want to forget that game. I also want to forget uh, the fact that we bottled it on the last day of the year against Derby. I know it wouldn't have meant anything had we won it, but it, it still just sucked to end the season with that. In terms of revenue, well, broadcast revenue's up, as would be expected. Competition prize money on the down, though, and match day income also on the down. That is simply just due to the fact that we didn't go on an FA Cup run last year. Last year, we took on Man City and made a million pounds as the away team. Yeah, uh, we didn't make that kind of money this time around. Fans play the year NDIA, young play the year NDIA, signing of the season. And I, I, yeah, I really need to get him on a new contract. It's going to be a horrible summer. And of course, record breakers, Alvin Stromberg, £3 million record transfer. He's on loan in Iceland at the moment. I want to be like, at least he's improving. He's still not got a work permit. Can I apply for the work permit yet? I can do it next week. If you wanted an updated look at the overall best 11, here it is. Soonset Bell, not good enough apparently to make the starting 11 in spite of being the top goal scorer. In terms of the 11 for the season just gone, here it is. If you're wondering, how did Ferrarinson do at Dundee Jack? Uh, zero goals in 16 games. Maybe we've scammed them for £100,000. We do actually receive £5 million as a lump sum just for playing in the championship, which is not an insignificant amount of money for us. It takes our overall balance to £16 million. Of course, we've got a load of sales going on which haven't officially gone through yet. If I'm not mistaken, that's going to involve our bank balance shooting up a little bit. Our transfer budget has already been increased accordingly. And well, with a few more sales under our belt, I think we're going to be in a position to maybe go on a spending spree next episode. I appreciate we all have very different definitions of a spending spree. I mean, for us, realistically, if we're spending, I don't know, over £5 million on a player, it's ridiculous. If a player's on more than £10,000 a week, I've lost the plot. But both those things could potentially happen this coming summer. To end the episode today, I do just want to do a little bit of a squad rundown, go for every position, just talk about the plans for the coming year. Goalkeeping-wise, of course, Keeley is leaving the building. We already have Kinski, who became our starting goalkeeper. Garcia, I think, is a pretty bloody good backup, to be fair. Um, the guy has a work permit for the next few years. He's locked in on a super long-term contract as well, which is nice. We also have Finn Brundle, who I think is probably adequate backup. We also have Juranovic, and of course, we have Isaac Warren. Realistically, I think to get £3 million for Keeley is great. And when I look at our goalkeeping position, whilst there's not a super standout, obvious first-choice goalkeeper here... I think there's adequate depth, at least for the coming season. That's not to say if there was an amazing goalkeeper that just fell into my lap as an option to sign, I wouldn't sign them. I probably would sign them. I think the defence this year was one of our strong points in terms of individuals stepping up and improving. Maybe less so in terms of performances. NDIA at left back, amazing. Gasperi, superb. Mkise, maybe a little bit of a question mark over him. A 6.82 rating in the championship this year was disappointing. I do feel like his 10 acceleration somewhat holds him back. Given his current valuation, it might not be the most silly idea in the world to look to move him on if the right bid is there. At right back, of course, Ricky D, end of the year at right back. There was a little bit of interest at various points in him. His contract, of course, ends next year, and right now he doesn't want to renew his contract due to a promise that doesn't exist. So, yeah, he could be on the chopping block, as could be Christian Martinez, to be fair as well. A player who I brought in, high hopes, 
hasn't matched them. I feel like the rest of the depth in the defence is kind of fine. Nick Lloyd-Jones, of course, signed in January. Great little left back. Got lots of caps for the Welsh national team. He's the kind of player who I feel like if NDIA was to leave the club, could potentially offer a stopgap option if there isn't a good left back out there. And of course, we do have the likes of Victor Coyote, who I think is good depth. Some younger players like Andy Johnson, kind of just useful to have as emergency backup. Similar story, I suppose, as well with Arben. Not a player you want to have nailed down in the first team, but the kind of player who could step up, I think, if needed. One player who perhaps doesn't have that kind of applied to them is Andrea Andrini. Yeah, he's probably going to be sold this summer. I just have to hope there's some interest in him. He He's just not good enough anymore. Moving up into the midfield, we are in a weird spot where I absolutely love the options that we've got. But if there was the ability to maybe add a step-up player, I might go out there and make it happen. Murphy and Goma this year really has cemented himself as a bit of an icon here at the club. Nine goals, nine assists, stepped up in the championship. Still doesn't want to discuss a new contract. Good news is, in spite of the fact he's on a part-time deal, he is still here for the next three years. But with his current valuation, I don't know if £20 million came in for him. I just look at him and I don't know if he's a £20 million player. Of course, the future in this position is looking particularly bright. We have the likes of Jao Victor, Toby Hines, more of a striking option, Kamara. I realise I've not got attacking midfielders ticked here. If we tick attacking midfielders, then you really see what I'm excited about. Look at the options we've got in terms of youngsters. I suppose the critical thing here is going to be, how do I get these all game time? That That's going to be a challenge in itself. But... I don't know. I feel like it's a challenge I'm more than up to. I suppose the depth that we've got here is also one of the reasons why someone like Xenia, I'm not against selling. Players like Aaron King as well, of course, signed on an amateur deal, probably need to look to loan him out for the coming year. There's just a few players here who didn't really make all that many appearances who could be on their way out alongside the likes of Soon Sut Bell and, of course, Ferreira, who's... Has Ferreira left? Ferreira should be in this list. Ferreira's gone missing. He's not here anyway. He's going to Oxford. Striking-wise as well, I feel like this is an area where we are solid. Of course, the likes of Espinosa and Gillian, players that I don't necessarily need to rush into the first team, but could be good options to give some first-team minutes to. Gillian, I feel like maybe I rushed in a little bit excitedly when we gave him the odd appearance here and there. Although, to be fair, he did get two championship assists. Soon Sir Bell is going to be leaving the building. That does leave us in terms of strikers with the likes of Hines, uh, Madder, I suppose, Faye, and also Oscar as the nailed on striking options. That, of course, not including, not in Dongo, you're not the power I was looking for, Roger Ospina, who's joining us. I am very excited about Roger. I think he is going to come in and probably instantly be our best striker. I mean, just for comparison here, Oscar, of course, best striker for us this year, performance wise. When you compare him with Roger, Roger's bloody good. Of all these players that we have got joining us, Roger is the only one who I think will walk straight into the first team. Someone like Bellardo might find odd opportunities here and there. Given the fact he's going to be turning 20 this summer, he's certainly a player who I'm willing to loan out. Of course, unless a player is 18 or younger, they will never get homegrown at club for training with us for three years. So there's not that fear about loaning them out and risking them not getting that homegrown status. Ultimately, this year, we were aiming for a mid-table finish. It's what we achieved. We're still held back by the stadium. That needs to be resolved. But we are in a position, having had a solid championship showing, where our reputation is on the up. The players that we can attract, even during this year, has got better and better. And with that in mind, a healthy bank balance, more money to come in the form of various clauses, and, well, a lot of headroom to expand the wage budget this summer could be quite fun. Anyway, folks, we are going to wrap things up there for season eight today. Hopefully you enjoyed this expanded end. Maybe I should make it a yearly thing where the end of season episode is just a bit more of a squad review with just the one game or something. Let me know what you thought down below. I feel like it's nice sometimes just to recap the squad, especially this year where we've made plenty of signings throughout the year. I appreciate sometimes it can be a bit tricky maybe to keep track of who's who. Tomorrow we will be back with a transfer special. I hope to see you guys for it. Thank you for watching today. Leave a like if you enjoyed and I'll catch you next time for more. I'm out.